Hi, welcome to this uh, short little tutorial where I show you how to do arrays and coroutines using Nautilus. So, start with just create a red cube prefab, uh, which we're going to use in the game. So, we'll start Nautilus, new script, be a mono behavior. Create scripts folder. And coroutines. All right. So for this example, we don't need to do any start um, functions. Uh, we're going to need to create a variable to hold our game object, which would be the cube, which we want to instantiate. Be game object. <clears throat> we want to create an array of game objects. And for this example, we're going to make it a fixed size of 10. And we're going to create an index. Be accessing the array in two methods. One will be direct index access, and the other will be using a for each loop. So we'll start with the update function. What we're going to do is when we click on the screen, it will create a cube in that location, and we'll store it in the array. So we'll start by checking for the mouse click. Mouse button. Check for the left click, which is zero. So if we click the mouse button, then we want to instantiate our cube. Instantiate. So it will be the cube. The position will be where we click the mouse. Uh, <clears throat> Based on the camera. And we get the mouse position for the, the screen point. And we want to have about 20 units away from the camera. Okay. So this create object, we want to store that in the array. So we do get set, which is there, get set array element. So the array is our cubes array. The index value will be array index, and the value will be our created object here. And then we want to update our array index after. So we we'll do increment decrement. The array index, and then check if we hit the end, we just reset it. If that, oops, no. Yes. So if that is equal to 10, because our array size is 10. 
then we reset it to zero. Set the rotation. <coughs> All right, so this should start already. Oh, we need to assign the script to a game object. So I'll just create an empty. Let's call it name. Put our script in there. So we'll see the array has already got the size of 10, but they're all empty. And we just have to assign our cube prefab to the game object to copy. So we can start now. You can see that the array is gradually filling up with every cube. And then it will start cycling around when we get past 10. Just overriding the other values in installing the array. Okay, so next we'll access the array by doing a for each, and we'll do this in a coroutine so you learn how to create a coroutine. So we'll go back to Notorous, we'll create a new function, we'll call it spin cubes. So, what we're going to do here is create a uh, for each loop, for each, for each cube in the array, we want to check if it's empty. I swear I hit the wrong one every time. <laughs> <clears throat> so if it's not equal to now, then want to spin it. So transform. Rotation, and rotation, and I'll just give it a random value just so they spin around. Random dot value. If we don't tick this box, then each random value will be different. If we tick it, each one of them will have the same value. And to make this a coroutine, we need to return an I numerator. And we only need to Return and now you return just a null. So just by doing that, it creates it makes this a, a coroutine which we'll have to call back in the update function. So we'll compile this, what have I done wrong? I have to assign that done. Okay, so now back in the update function, after we've done this test, so from the finished section, we just want to call the spin cubes. So we go start coroutine. So the coroutine will be spin cubes.
and that should be it. Now, every time we click, we'll go through it step by step, actually, sorry. So every time we click the mouse, we store our cube in the array, which is controlled by the index. We increase the index and reset it when it gets past 10. And then we call the coroutine to spin the cubes. In spin cubes, we cycle through each cube that's in the array. If it's got an actual object in there, then we just give it a random rotation and we finish the coroutine by returning null. So I'll give it a go and see what happens. So you can see every time we click, it's rotating the cubes. But once we get past the array cubes, it will only spin the ones that are actually in the array because it's doing a for each through the array. And there you go. That's a simple little tutorial on how to use arrays and coroutines. I hope this uh, tutorial helps a little bit and as always, uh, leave any questions either here or in the uh, Nothros forums. See you later.